Good morning shrimp people, welcome to Mark Shrimp Tanks. In today's video we're going to be talking about EC meters and TDS meters and their differences. So I suggest you go and grab yourself a very very large bucket of coffee and uh, strap yourself in because this is going to be a good one. Alright guys, so this was a subscriber question from um, my Facebook group, not a subscriber, a member question from my Facebook group, group, right? So her name was Christina Chen and she asked, what's the benefit of using a conductivity meter, conductivity meter versus a TDS meter, right? So it's better that if I just tell you what they actually do and then we can go over their uses in the shrimp room and then you can just make your mind up yourself from there on in. All right, guys, let's start with conductivity meters. So what are they and how do they actually work? Right, so this is a conductivity meter and it measures your water's ability to conduct electricity. Here, have a little stay. So basically, guys, on the end of these things, there's a little probe here, right, and it measures the electrical conductivity of the water. Water becomes a better conductor when salts and minerals are added to it, forming ions. So the more ions there is, the better the conductivity. This is crucial for reverse osmosis water users who need to add just the right of minerals, making sure the water is perfect for the shrimp. All right, guys, let's talk about what is a TDS meter. What makes a TDS meter and how is it different from a conductivity meter? A TDS meter measures total dissolved solids and gives you an overview of everything dissolved in your water. And by the way, guys, I used to actually get this wrong. I used to call it total dissolved salts, which is almost correct, but not quite correct. It's total dissolved solids. It starts by measuring conductivity and then estimates the total amount of dissolved substances to make an assumption. Yes, you heard that correct. TDS meters aren't actually reading something scientifically. They are basing it on an assumption. And guys, as far as I know, this assumption is based on the salinity of the water. Right? So the more or less salinity the water is, the difference, differences in assumption that the TDS meter will make. I think it has like a little algorithm in here that decides what to tell you on your little screen, based on Solani. So this assumption can also be based around uh, other things, not just salts and minerals, but also other things in your tank like plant fertilizer, shrimp waste and leftover food rates. So it's making a general assumption without knowing what's actually in the tank. All right guys, so the burning question that will be in a lot of your minds is, which one do you need and why? Right, so let's go over that next. Let's start with the conductivity meter. If you are a reverse osmosis unit users, guys, if you use reverse osmosis water, then this is the tool that you want. You want a EC meter. This is electrical conductivity meter, EC. Right? It measures ions across the two probe. And why this is good for us, guys, is because we make our own water from pure water, right? So when you use this for the first time in pure water and you switch it on, you should get a zero reading on your little gauge here right so that means your water is very very pure right and the good thing with this guys is that when you add your desired amount of salts to it this gives you a very very accurate reading so if you're using tap water a tds meter should be used right guys i can't stress this enough right if you're going to get a tds meter make sure that you are definitely going to use uh, a gh test kit and a kh test kit because they're probably more important than this if you have tap water, but if you can splash the cash and you want to just test something a little bit extra, then this is a really good little device to get right in. What this allows you to do in, in, a, in a tank with tap water, guys, is it allows you to detect when you possibly need to do a water change, right? So, for example, if I go in here and I measure this and it says 300 parts per million, um, within like two weeks as an example, if it is roughly the same, then you probably don't need to do a water change. But um, yeah, these are good little tools to give you temperature as well. So yeah, if you're on tap, you definitely want to get one of these. They're both absolutely excellent tools. Right? Remember, this is better for reverse osmosis water. This is better for tap water. And uh, yeah, they both do similar jobs. What's really, really important as well, guys, is that you do not confuse the two, right? So if you are on reverse osmosis water, right, I would go like this. I would drop the TDS meter and go with a conductivity meter. Try and use one, not both, because all you'll end up doing, right, is confusing yourself. The numbers on these are not the same thing. One measures in US Siemens and one measures in parts per million, right? So understand that, right? Don't get them mixed up. 